Welcome everyone to the second video where we are converting the application class to a React functional component called Folio with a Folio canvas wrapper around it which uh, implements the React Refiver canvas. In the last video we left off with a working application where you could drive around but uh, the color seemed quite off so if you would compare that with Bruno Simon's project Right here you would see that this one is way more orange compared to more red color here. Um, and there is a vertical and a horizontal scroll bar in the page with some uh, additional space here on the bottom. So we're going to fix all that in this video. So what's going wrong here is that before um, you used to import the index.js file. Inside of that file we also imported some styles. Uh, those styles were created by Bruno himself to uh, style the overlay uh, for, for example, the messages that we see here. So what we have to do is import that CSS as well. So let's do so by importing folio slash source slash style slash main.css. And if we would save that, it automatically disappears. Now this main.css file does contain some CSS that we could remove. For example, the uh, .canvas uh, references the, the canvas with the canvas class. Uh, we are not using that anymore because uh, we created our own React Fiber canvas. So uh, I could clean all of this up, but I'll, uh, I'll not make that part of this course because it's not so relevant since uh, our application is running correctly now. What I will focus on though is the uh, color differences that you see in the scene. Uh, and for that I copied over the set renderer function that we removed before from the application class. Um, I'll comment it out and create some extra space here. So what happened in this uh, set renderer function is it created the WebGL renderer but it also set a few properties of that renderer such as the, uh, or it's called the set clear color function. It set uh, the physical correct lights to true, etc. Um, so we'll have to do that inside of our own uh, React 3 Fiber canvas as well now. Um, so we could call the set clear color, but a more easy way to do that, uh, to set the background is um, by adding an extra child, which is called color and attach that to the background property. It will be attached to the property from the scene. Uh, and we can pass it the arguments, which will be the same as the arguments that uh, Bruno passed, which is uh, a black color. Now the other properties that we need to set are not part of the um, scene, but are part of the WebGL renderer. So for that, we can set the GL property and in there we have access to the different properties of the WebGL renderer and we can set those there. Um, so for example, it's setting the pixel ratio to two and we can do that here as well. So let's do so. Uh, another thing it does is it sets the size. We don't have to do that because it's taken care of by Reactory Fiber. React Fiber. Um, we do need to set the physically correct lights property to true. Um, we don't have to set the gamma output uh, because of the same reason as before. Um, the color is now managed by uh, 3GS since a specific version. So um, we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, but we do still need to add the auto clear property and set that to false. Okay, so if we refresh the page now, the colors are still not correct, even though we uh, implemented all uh, the properties that were set in the set renderer, which I'll, rem I'll remove now. Now it's important to notice that not only the background color is a wrong color, but also the car and the trees and everything else is, uh, is the wrong color. Um, and it's important to notice this difference because uh, there are 
different reasons why those have a wrong color and why the background has a different color. And we'll go over each of those. Um, the first one is that Reactory Fiber Canvas uh, sets some default configuration for the WebGL renderer, uh, which is not the default of 3GS. So if we would go to the Reactory Fiber documentation and then go to the Canvas page, this page includes a render defaults section, which uh, contains all the defaults that the Reactory Fiber Canvas uh, sets for you. Uh, and it also sets, for example, the output encoding and the tone mapping properties. Um, now, Bruno didn't take this into account when he created the project because he created it in 3GS and not in Reactory Fiber. So, um, yeah, you can actually see this difference right here. We can set the property inside of the GL um, property of the canvas. So if we would do that, you get to see that the default value of that output encoding in 3GS is linear encoding, while in uh, Reactory Fiber it's set to sRGB encoding. So we're going to reset that to the default, which is the linear encoding. And we'll do the same for the tone mapping, which has a default of no tone mapping compared to this value. All right, so let's save that. And this will fix the issue for the car and the, the trees and uh, everything else in the scene. But there are still a few uh, color differences. Uh, for example, the background is still not fixed and also the shadow um, of the car and of the trees and actually all the objects is still uh, slightly off. And that is because Bruno uses custom shaders for things like the background, uh, which is actually the floor. And the custom shader expect uh, linear encoded uh, textures as input. Uh, same for, for example, the uh, shadow. Um, and we actually set this to linear encoding, but if we would go to the React3 Fiber documentation under color management, you'll see that um, since the new, new version of 3, everything will now be converted from sRGB to linear space by 3 itself. So um, it kind of expects an sRGB encoded texture, even though we provide a linear encoded texture. So we'll have to convert that back for the custom shaders that uh, Bruno made. I can imagine that this is quite hard to understand. If you want to know more about color management, there is actually a link um, to the 3GS documentation, which contains quite some useful information about it. And inside of this documentation on the bottom, there is some uh, additional uh, documentation. So further reading uh, about color management as well. Uh, for now, the way we are going to solve this is we're going to revert that conversion. Um, and we can do that in the floor.js file, for example. This is where we are updating the materials uh, and we are setting four colors here. And the way to convert those colors back um, is by calling the convert linear to sRGB uh, function. So let's add that to all the four colors, which are the corner colors of this floor. So for all those four corners. And if we would save that and refresh the page, you'll see that the colors look way better now. You might have noticed that error that just appeared when I saved the file. Uh, we'll still look into this at the end of this video. But that's fixed the issue for the background color, uh, but now we still need to fix it for this glow on the left bottom and for the shadows. And for the glow, we can go to the folio.psx file, um, which contains the set passes function. And in there, we are setting the glows pass, which accepts a color. And this color is um, used to instantiate a 3GS color, and that one is to be converted from linear to sRGB as well. 
and be aware that um, this same property is set once again below um, in the debug panel uh, so we'll have to set it there as well now let's refresh and there we go this is the original glow now for the shadow we'll have to update the shadows.js this one contains a set materials function where we are setting a uniform u color and we set it to this new 3js color same here we'll have to convert that from linear to srgb let's refresh and you'll see that that looks way better for the car but um, the other objects are still having a quite red uh, shadow which is not how it should be uh, and this is because we are using the shadow class, shadows class for this car for example but uh, some of the other objects set the shadows directly inside of the objects class uh, and that's right here on the on this pretty big function called sit set parsers and then on the floor section it's setting the uh, shadow the u shadow color uniform to a new 3js color and that's where we need to add the conversion as well now if you refresh that we should be good to go and that is indeed the case if you would uh, compare this to uh, Bruno Simon's project you'll see that it's exactly the same and that was actually everything we had to do to convert the application to use the react Free fiber canvas so congratulations on that you now know how to convert that yourself um, one more thing that I wanted to mention is that if we make a change to the uh, folio um, file as you might have seen before it's throwing an error um, let me refresh and this is because we are using the use callback hook for the destructor um, which we shouldn't so let's uh, take the function out of there and let's just return that inside of the use effect hook um, so that was a minor mistake that i missed uh, this is still going to cause an error because um, the current debug uh, value will not be set because we are not in debug mode now this is quite easy to solve by just checking if it is actually set and only then we are calling the destroy function but if we now refresh and we make a change it's not throwing any errors anymore there is still one problem though and that is that if we make a change so let's make a change here and the old uh, 3d models will stay in the scene so you can successfully uh, run the website now but um, yeah we need to remove all the objects from the scene first and the way to do that is by adding a scene.remove uh, and here we'll need to specify which uh, objects we want to remove now the great part about bruno's uh, code style is that in the world class he added all the all the 3d models inside a single container so we can just remove one container and therefore remove the entire uh, 3d scene that you see so what we can do is remove world.current.container and if we save that, let's refresh and start the website. Now, if we make a change, all the old objects will be removed and we can just start fresh. And there might be some memory leaks here because we don't dispose all the textures and so on. Um, but the great part about the reactory fiber is that it all happens automatically there so i'm not going to solve all of that um, right now because we will uh, we won't have that problem once we are fully reactive fiber and that was actually everything for this video so i hope you enjoyed it i hope you could follow along 
If you have any feedback then please let me know. Uh, and since you made it this far to the video, I would really appreciate it if you could like and uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look into the floor.js uh, file, including the floor material. This, uh, we're going to convert this to uh, reactory fiber and also include the conversion to a uh, custom material inside of reactory fiber, which is going to be pretty cool. So see you there.